I had a few days to get out of the city this summer, so I decided to drive up to the small town of Brevard, North Carolina to hike the Art Loeb Trail. I'd heard the trail was challenging, that it had tough climbs and could be difficult to follow in places. The heat of the summer was in full effect. I wondered if it would be hard to stay hydrated or if I would get caught out in a thunderstorm. It took me three and a half hours to reach Brevard and almost as long to settle my nerves about the trail. Brevard sits on the edge of Pisgah National Forest, just a few minutes drive from the southern terminus of the Art Loeb Trail. The trail is 30 miles long, but I would add another three miles to hike a side trail to the summit of Cold Mountain because, well, because it's there, I guess. I plan to do the hike in two days, spending only one night out under the stars. I caught a shuttle from the southern terminus to the northern trailhead at Camp Daniel Boone, nestled in the valley below Cold Mountain. It's a steep climb to get up to where a side trail branches off to get to the summit of Cold Mountain, but it was well worth the effort. From there I would backtrack to the Art Loeb Trail and continue climbing up to the exposed ridge at over 6,000 feet on Tennant Mountain to camp for the night. The next morning I would continue climbing up to Black Balsam Bald before gradually working my way down over many ups and downs to Gloucester Gap and eventually down to the Davidson River Valley where the trail ends. I always get a rush of nervous excitement on the first day of a hike. I'm alone in nature, one with the elements. There's no going back. There's nothing waiting behind me. Everything is ahead. There is only undeniable clarity that I have no choice but to march forward. This simplicity brings me both comfort and satisfaction. As I worked my way over roots and rocks, up to the peak of Cold Mountain, and then across the ridge into Shining Rock Wilderness. I enjoyed the feeling of my body performing its physical symphony, adopting the rhythm and tempo I demanded of it. My leg muscles fired like pistons, propelling me forward. The sweat poured off my brow in kind. I felt alive. I was alive.
camped on the exposed ridge of Tennant Mountain, just above 6,000 feet in elevation. It was a good place to gain perspective, to feel rightfully insignificant in the universe. It was a good place to just let everything go. And so I did. What do we do when the catharsis of a hike is complete? When we get back in the car? When we go back home? It's easy to feel lost when the perpetuity and ephemerality of something both feel like torture, even when we know the path lies somewhere in between. If there is one thing I've both observed and learned while hiking, it's that in the wild, nature steers everything back to balance, eventually. And if I let it, maybe, just maybe, even me.